I discovered that I was having some problems getting the Cricut to print out a bleed when I had a backing sheet on my stickers, but this was only the case when I had solid stickers, like these circle ones. Um, when there's a white outline, it usually prints out fine because it doesn't need to have a bleed, but in this one here, you can see that it didn't print a bleed and my cutting wasn't perfect. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I add a manual bleed so that you can avoid those small cutting errors. So I'm using Photoshop, but you might be able to recreate this in any other program. So I have my stickers on a separate layer to my backing sheet as normal. And what you do is you command click on the thumbnail of your stickers, which selects them like this. Now this just selects the outline of our stickers, but we want to make it bigger to create the bleed. So we go to the select menu at the top, click modify and expand. So the higher the number you put, the bigger the pixels expand. So I put 10 pixels, which works well for me. 15 might have worked well also. So this new expanded selection will be the bleed for your stickers. So we want to put them on a new layer. So you can go to the layer menu, click new layer, or on your keyboard you can press command shift N. That's just the shortcut for it. Now we want to fill in the selection with each of the colors of the stickers, but I'm just going to fill it all in with just one color first so I don't lose the selection. And you can get to fill by going edit, fill, or the shortcut is a function shift F5. Now that I've filled it in, it's safe to deselect because I can always reselect it. But now I have to go in and match the color of the stickers to the bleed. This next part is pretty simple, but it'll sound pretty confusing as I explain it. So bear with me as I try to make it simple. I use the eyedropper tool um, by selecting eye to select the color of the sticker. And then I make sure I'm on the layer that has the bleed. And then I use the paint bucket tool, which you can see selected, to fill in the bleed, the circles that match that color sticker. And I just keep doing this for each of the colors. I use the eyedropper tool to select the color and then the paint bucket tool to fill in the bleed. If you notice, I haven't changed layers because you can select the color using the eyedropper tool even if it's on a different layer. So I just remain on the bleed layer and I select the colors and fill it in. I just do this for each color as I go. There may be an easier way to do this, but this is the method that works for me and it makes the most sense to me. So don't be afraid to just experiment and find the process that works for you. And as you can see, I missed a color. The final step is just to merge the backing sheet with the bleed because we want to flatten these two images so that Cricut has no idea that there is any difference. It'll just treat this bleed as a backing sheet and it'll print it out, but it won't cut around it. So you can just select these two layers and right click merge layers or command E, I think is the shortcut. Now the most annoying part for me personally is uploading them onto Cricut and making sure that they're aligned. I haven't really thought of a better solution to this yet, but it's easy to center it vertically, but horizontally because it's not in the middle, you'll have to kind of eyeball this. Because it's hard to tell if the stickers are in the center because it's the same color as the bleed, I like to just go in and change the fill of it to something different. Um, I chose white here, but really I should have chose something more obvious like bright yellow. This part's not too complex. I just go into the position and change the X and Y values. Uh, nothing too big, just small little nudges until I think that it looks right. This is not the most accurate method, but it works pretty well for me. Once you're done and you're happy with the positioning of it, you can go back to the fill and change it back to the original artwork and don't forget to click restore. That is basically all that you have to do. So I'm just showing you here again what I'm doing with another sticker. Um, these are solid labels, uh, but it's the same process. The basic idea of this whole tutorial is just so that we can add a manual bleed but merge that with the backing sheet so that Cricut doesn't see this as a separate image. So really we just want it to print the bleed but cut the stickers as normal.